that's maybe a little bit naughty. Oh, I've had so much fun on the twisties today, really have. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Firstly, thanks so much for the warm response and the positive response with my bike content. And before this gorgeous press bike heads back to BMW Motor Ad UK, I figured I had to take it away. And I'm not just going to take it to Wales or even Scotland. I'm going to take it down to the Alps and I leave very early tomorrow morning. Tomorrow's journey is going to be about eight or nine hours in the saddle, roughly 450 miles. And then the next day is going to be a little bit shorter, probably six or seven hours uh, and about 300 miles. And on that second day, we'll be entering the Alps. So I plan this video to be the first two days and then I'll make another one once I'm down in the Alps looking at some of the amazing roads and passes along the way. Aside from the GS, I have everything laid out behind me, uh, of which I plan to bring on the trip. It's been difficult because unlike a car where you can throw more than what you need in there, on the bike you're limited. And obviously the more you bring, the more weight you carry, the more weight you've got to throw around throughout the whole journey, especially when I get to the twisties up in the Alps. So I'm trying to pack light and I better not say that too loud because Lou will probably start laughing inside. On the back there we have, I think they call it the BMW Black Collection bag. It straps onto the GS very easily, essentially two straps on the front that pull it forward and there's a loop underneath that goes over the rear carrier. So very easy to get on and off. Um, and that has basically got all of my clothes uh, for the next six days. And over here, well, I've got my leathers out. RST very kindly sent me some incredible adventure gear, but temperatures tomorrow are gonna to be around 30. When I get down to the south of France and near the Alps, it's gonna be low 30s. There might be some thunderstorms and rain, but I think the adventure gear is just going to be too hot. So I'm going to bring my leathers because they are by far and away the most ventilated motorbike clothes I've got. And I think I've talked about it before on the camera. You just feel so good and so free on the bike when you're wearing leathers. And that's going to be really important because I'm going to be spending a lot of time on the bike. I've got some gloves there. I've got my gorgeous carbon uh, race star bell helmet on the helmet itself. I have uh, my GoPro around the front, which would be my main camera angle. Still trying to figure out which is the best mic solution for this long journey. I don't want to be faffing too much because I just need to get on with it. And I've got a Cardo uh, PackTalk Edge Bluetooth communication system, which is the best in the business. Basically links up to all of the infotainment on the bike and my phone so I can make phone calls. I can listen to music on those long hauls down the French toll routes over the next few days um, and a number of other things. It's a really important piece of kit and it means that when Lou eventually gets her leathers and her gear and we go out together next year or if I go out riding, um, when I get back with other friends, I can talk to them. Um, it's just brilliant and it means that you're not too lonely on the bike, although I am going to be on my own for this trip which I'm kind of looking forward to. I think it's going to be a really good trip for the mind. Um, I've got my tinted or pro tint visor on. Basically, when it's dark, this goes more or less clear. Uh, and when it gets sunny, it goes darker. Um, I think that's going to be the perfect visor for this trip. I've also got one of Chris's, Baron Von Grumble's, um, torque stickers on my helmet and I've got a couple on the bike. Other things, once again, RST have sent me out some lovely uh, boots. They are fairly protective. They're not as protective as my other boots that I've got from them, uh, but they're a lot lighter and more ventilated and I think they're going to be perfect for this trip. I wore them around the house a bit earlier and took them out for a quick ride on the bike. 
they feel fantastic. They really do. They remind me very much of a good pair of driving shoes because they mould around your feet really nicely. Um, so looking forward to putting plenty of miles on those. I've also got a thermal layer, uh, which is zipped out currently because I'm not going to need it tomorrow, but that's packed in there just in case when I get to the Alps, it gets a bit cooler. And I've got an RST overalls uh, that goes over the top of my whole um, suit, essentially, which makes me pretty much waterproof and keeps the majority of the rain out. And last but not least, I kind of figured I needed a bag, and I do because this is almost full, but thankfully with light stuff. Um, lovely Oakley bag. I've got a hydration system there because once again, unlike a car, you can't just reach over and have a drink. And I'm sure I'm gonna discover so much more along the way because it's just a massive learning experience for me. And while I'm on that, massive shout out and thanks to everyone that's DM me or commented on my motorbike videos. Um, offering me a lot of advice on stuff that I just didn't know about. Um, but biggest thanks goes to my good friend Chris, once again, Baron Von Grumble, uh, for just being such a legend. But all my um, expensive stuff will go in here. Laptops, camera gear, passport, wallet, etc., will be in this because every time I get off the bike to fill up with fuel, for instance, the bag will stay with me um, and just leave my clothes and stuff on there. People can have my dirty washing if they're that desperate. I'm gonna go inside and spend a little bit of time with Lou because I have been non-stop for the past few days preparing for this trip, making sure that I've got everything and uh, it hasn't been easy, but I'm sure that's just because it's the first time that I've done a trip like this on a bike. <laughs> um, and uh, I'm very excited about it. I am a little bit anxious, I'm a little bit nervous, but I think it wouldn't be right if I wasn't. Okay then guys, here we go, off on a big adventure. I was meant to leave at about 20 past eight and I didn't leave until about quarter to nine. So a little bit behind, but uh, nothing new there in my world. What is important is the weather is absolutely beautiful and is predicted to be lovely all day all 480 miles I think I've got to do today, which is uh, <laughs> a long way in a car, let alone on a motorbike. Oh, I'm looking forward to this. I really am. Today and much of tomorrow is gonna be a long slog, and I know that, but it's the rewards at the other end. I am gonna turn the cameras off now, set the cruise control, like I have now indicated 72, which is a ways 70 miles an hour. Perfecto. And I'll see you somewhere much closer to the Euro Tunnel. Right, you join me about two and a half hours later and I'm just boarding the Euro Tunnel. It was a fairly painless journey here. Joined the M25, uh, wasn't looking forward to that section. It's probably the, the most unexciting section of this whole trip, I hope. Uh, and there was a little bit of traffic, but it wasn't horrendous. Yeah, we now find ourselves down here, about to board the train. I keep wanting to say plane, but train. My phone's saying 23 degrees, the dash was saying 28 a minute ago. Feels definitely more like 28 when you're stationary on the bike. I have covered exactly, or well, almost exactly 150 miles. We've averaged 53.2 miles to the gallon, <laughs> which is just incredible for a motorbike. And the good thing is, when you get to the twisties, that shouldn't drop too much. I'm expecting around 35 to 40 in the Alps. So Although it only has a 20 litre tank, uh, we should realistically get a range of about 220, 230 miles on the motorway. Maybe a little bit less in France because we can pick the pace up a bit because uh, their speed limit's a bit higher. Tokyo Fuel Tanks, the adventure version of this bike comes with a 30 litre tank. So I can imagine with that, you're gonna be getting, well, 
over 300 miles on uh, a motorway run, which which is definitely more than enough on a bike. I'm a little bit sore <laughs> already, but that's just because I'm so new to this. I've not spent nearly three hours non-stop on a bike before. I also had a bit of an accident in a go-kart about 10, 11 days ago. At the time I thought I might have broken a rib and yeah I've not been sleeping that well because I'm in quite a lot of pain so I'm hoping that I haven't broken a rib and I mean a rib around the back of my rib cage there's not really much you can do apparently but obviously if the pain continues to get worse then I will consult my doctor. Don't leave your pet at home we love pets. Well, there we go, on the train, let's relax, drink lots of water and make sure everything is set for the next sector. And here we are in France. It looks warm out there, looks very, very warm. So I've swapped everything over to kilometers. Obviously that's how they measure it out here. It's just handier especially for things like speed limits. Uh, and my Waze is all set up and also converted. So uh, yeah, it's saying three hours and 55 minutes, 460K, I'd say that's about 300 miles. We will find somewhere to stop, fuel up and grab a sandwich in about half an hour's time. Cheers. Just over there is the France sign. There we go. Officially now we're in France. I do feel like I escape all of my stress and worries back home in the UK as soon as I get out here. Whether it's in a car or evidently on a bike. There's another portaloo in front. There's a lot of portaloos on this trip. I suppose if you own a portaloo, taking it on the continent, taking it abroad, is the best thing you can do. That's a 110, just in case you didn't know. It's got it written on the back. I'm gonna crack on. I'll see you guys a little bit later. Adios. Right, you join me. Couldn't be much more than half an hour longer or later. Um, oh, I've been to France well over a hundred times in my life driving. It's the first time on a bike. And each and every time I forget and underestimate how good their roads are. I mean, they are just outstanding and how expensive their fuel is, yikes. Uh, right, oh nice 3 Series Touring. We're all fueled up now and ready to rumble. Not only was the fuel massively overpriced which you'd kind of expect at uh, motorway services you get that in the UK as well really really annoys me at least in the UK I'll try and plan around it but when you're stuck on a toll route like this uh, it is difficult to come off to find a petrol station so you're kind of stuck paying tolls and paying for overpriced fuel the tolls I actually don't mind I've got my toll tag in here and used it once so far and it seemed to work what I need to check though is when I get back that I'm being charged 
uh, for a bike and I'm not being charged for a car. Anyway, I'm going to crack on. We have another three hours to go till I get to the hotel. So I will join you a bit later. You join me at 10 to 7. Look at this beautiful view. I peeled off the motorway or the toll route uh, about 20 minutes ago and I'm five minutes away from the hotel. I'm very much looking forward to getting to the hotel, having some food, maybe a cheeky glass of wine and going to bed. I think I'm going to sleep pretty well tonight. Uh, it's been an awesome day really has it's been hard hard on the mind hard on the bum hard on the arms hard everywhere um thankfully that injury i talked about earlier on isn't hurting um and i think i'm grateful that i have started to get myself into shape over the last four or so months i've been rowing pretty much every morning every morning i'm home anyway doing about 40 minutes on the rower, on a proper rower. I'm not sure how many people or how many bikers are crazy enough, especially <laughs> new bikers like me. I've gone from doing, I don't know, 130 miles to London and back to today. Well, when I get to the hotel, I'm gonna be a couple of kilometers shy of um, 700 kilometers in one day. Something else that I'm definitely looking forward to doing is cleaning my visor because it is absolutely scattered in flies and roadkill just like um, the bike's visor. I've averaged 44.1 up until now so from when I left home until now. As you know when I got to the tunnel it was at 53 so uh, I've been hemorrhaging <laughs> fuel in France and I think the difference being that in the UK I was sitting around 70 miles an hour and in France I've been sitting around 95, uh, 85 miles an hour, sorry. Um, makes a big difference. Look at this, what a beautiful place. What a beautiful place. They're about to play some Patonk. Oh they are, look at that. The locals. Everyone's very friendly. Ah, oh, this is the life, isn't it? This is the life. Pretty sure it's in here. Uh, anyway, well, I will investigate and find out. There we go. Not bad at all. Lovely little find in a beautiful sleepy little village. Jacket and helmet are airing. Nice cold bottle of water. And there is the GS down there. Uh, so it was the right gate. That's the owner. He's just uh, pulled up to let me in with his little dog. I'm gonna have a shower and then head out to find some food. Um, apparently there's a Le Routier about two kilometers away, uh, which is like a, I think it used to be a truck stop restaurant, but the owner of this place said it's good food and it will get me full and give me some energy for tomorrow. He couldn't believe that I'd <laughs> ridden all the way from essentially Silverstone to here, 700 kilometers, wow. Anyway, I'll see you guys in the morning. Well, that was lovely. What a really, really enjoyable evening. Lovely hotel or B&B owner. We were chewing the fat this morning. I was meant to leave at 9 a.m. and well, it's just gone 10. But you know what? It was worth it because he was so interesting. Look at this for a beauty. I probably shouldn't be doing this, but came in here last night. 
Look at that place. Absolutely stunning. Right. Let's get out of here. I love exploring little places like this. So important to get off the beaten track, in my opinion. Don't stay on a motorway hotel. I know sometimes it's really convenient. Um, and you are saving a fraction of time, but you know what? Come off the beaten track and uh, explore. Today we are heading over to Lake Annecy. That's the first um, stop, or Annecy, and I'm going to have lunch hopefully down on Lake Annecy. Need to fill up with fuel probably at least once. I think I've got about half a tank. And then we're going to head up into some of the Alps to where we're staying tonight. Oh, it's nice and cool today. There's a bit of a cool breeze. Although it's already 19, 20 degrees, especially here in the shade, there's a bit of a cool breeze running on my chest, which is lovely, lovely jubbly. I'm going to switch the cameras off and I'll join you a bit later on. Goodbye. You join me about four and a quarter hours later and this is the beautiful Lake Annecy. What a spot. I wish that I wasn't in my leathers <laughs> and I wish I was in my swimming shorts because it looks amazing. I have actually got my swimming shorts in my bag but my schedule is a bit tight today and it'll be too much faffing around. I left the hotel or the B&B this morning as you know had about an hour of wonderful countryside roads um, it was so lovely waking up to that and, and going to all of that and then I've had what three hours of toll routes um, the last hour or so was quite picturesque as the mountains start to appear and the roads start to separate and uh, yeah I definitely saw some incredible sights along the way I then stopped about an hour ago <laughs> just to recoup have a stretch have a drink um, eat some fruit just to give me a bit more energy I am heading to a lunch stop or a lunch spot uh, that I've been to a few times before with the Petrolhead tours and then in 2018 so the most recent time I've been here those are my long-term and hardcore viewers will remember that Lake Annecy is where I started I think my M4 CS video the F82 and in fact the road that I filmed the bulk of that video on is the road that I'm going to be going on after lunch and it's essentially in that direction it's up over that hill and then there's mountains and kind of it's the start of the Alps really um, yeah it gets very big behind there and behind there in front of us and over there in fact we're surrounded by bigness. I am going to turn this off uh, I will join you at the lunch spot. Lunch with a view. Not bad hey? Beautiful. Right then guys, you join me after a fantastic lunch and I'm now heading up into the mountains. I've been on the road for about 20 minutes and I've got this amazing looking pass ahead of me. So um, yeah, I thought I'd put the cameras on and bring you along for the journey. Not that you can see it now, but <laughs> I've got so many flies over my visor. <laughs> I cleaned it last night so it was fresh this morning but it just doesn't last long enough. I think on a Euro tour 
you definitely need some form of tear off because it can get covered in bugs in a matter of minutes if you happen to ride through a swarm of them or a group of them, a bunch of them. Oh, it's just wonderful up here, isn't it? Absolutely wonderful. It's a bit cooler as well. The sun's just as intense, if not more, because we're going up in altitude, but the ambient temperature is a little bit cooler, which is important. <laughs> Here we are, getting towards the top, beautiful. What a place, what a place to ride. I mean, look at it, wonderful. I remember driving the M4 CS down here and uh, there was lots of paragliders around and I'd sent the drone up but I hadn't seen the paragliders until I got around this corner. <laughs> of course, a drone and paragliders, well, they don't tend to mix. Right, there is Lake Annecy down there. Hopefully you can see that maybe through those trees. Wow. Well, that was a fantastic ride back down. What I didn't realize was Mont Blanc was in the background. I might have used that picture as the thumbnail actually for this video. Um, if I did or if I didn't, here it is. And that is Mont Blanc in the background, which is just unreal, 5,000 meters. And this section right here, <laughs> is once again M4CS drone footage. I'll see if I can dig it out. Um, yeah, I sent the drone up, let it hover back there and then ran the carton down, actually turned around this driveway a few times, probably annoyed those guys. Quite a thing, I mean that was exactly five years ago and yes the channel has come a long way since then but Boy, oh boy, did I put the effort in and the money in. I mean, back then, 2018, what was I earning off YouTube? About a grand a month. So, and I mean, that trip would have cost me, although it was a family trip, but I paid for the majority of it because it was a video trip. And that video trip would have cost me 1500 quid probably my extravagant video ideas they still haven't stopped have they i mean this trip unfortunately motorbike videos don't get the traction on my channel especially but uh a bit like the trip i did with the gt3 touring last year i'd call this a selfish trip because it's fulfilling one of my dreams and uh I'm absolutely loving it. Right then guys, this is probably a good time to switch the cameras off and focus on getting to the hotel. 
because I still have a good hour and 40 minutes until I'm there. So uh, yeah, I'll see you a bit later. You join me on the final climb up to my hotel on night two. It's been an epic day, it really has. Once again, I've done loads of miles or kilometers. We're nearly at 550 Ks, which is just insane when I did 700 yesterday. But it's been great today, really has. It's been very hot, thankfully, to look cooler here in the shade and up at altitude. So I'm heading up the road that takes us to the top of Galibier. I'm staying in a hotel just before that. That was maybe a little bit naughty. In a place called Valour or Valoui, something like that. I probably butchered yet another French name. <laughs> Oh, I've had so much fun on the twisties today, really have. I've learned a lot about bike control. It's just been brilliant. I hope you've enjoyed this video. <laughs> I suppose if you got this far, then you probably have. My channel has always been about sharing my experiences and I know I've been doing a lot of, well, not a lot, but a fair amount more bike content lately. And I'm glad actually, because it's epic. It's absolutely epic. Funny thing about this climb, is we actually came up at last July. I say we, me, Lou, our friends in their 911. I was in my M3 Saloon X Drive and it was in July, so just over a year ago. But what we didn't check, ah, as if by magic, <laughs> was the tour dates. Obviously, the Tour de France biggest sporting event in the world I think it must be one of them and I love cycling and I love the tour but when you don't plan for it yeah it took us as a bit of a surprise and we actually came up here I think it was the day before the tour which basically meant that there was loads of really slow moving traffic camper vans etc setting up for the night so they could be on the route the next day I mean it would be epic I want to do that one day as well but I didn't want to do it that day I wanted to get a move on and enjoy this road and we just couldn't oh look at this view wow so uh, yeah it was a slow moving experience Today is uh, a little bit quicker, but I'm not taking any risks on the bike because I don't really know where its limits are and I don't want to find them out on the road, but I'm feeling a lot more comfortable on it and loving it. It really combines spirited car driving and downhill mountain biking, which for me is absolutely perfect. I love this, watch this. There you go. Every single person that you wave to on a bike, predominantly adventure bikes, predominantly BMW GSs, because <laughs> they are two to the penny out here. I reckon 90% of the adventure bikes you see are GSs. 1200s, 1250s like this one. Really hard to tell in France what the speed limit is sometimes because you can enter towns and villages without realizing if you miss the sign 
basically a town or a village sign should indicate so like this one here that should indicate that we need to get on to 50 k's an hour so 30 miles an hour um, but you don't always see them at least i don't uh, it is hard to pick up do like that about the uk 30 signs are pretty clear when you're coming in oh look at this absolutely beautiful okay well there's plenty going on around here plenty of restaurants supermarkets a lot more than where i stayed last night that's neither a good thing or a bad thing i guess it's a good thing for my dinner and i guess it's a bad thing in terms of feeling remote busy place isn't it busy busy place it's amazing maybe not this particular place because the tour c has come through here for many many years so they've they've had lots of cycling and driving and motorbikes come through here for the economy but many mountain ski villages they used to close down during the summer because they would only make money in the winter they'd make enough money in the winter and then literally shut down in the summer months but nowadays thanks to mountain biking enduro and downhill um, yeah these places these beautiful ski villages stay open in the summer months are you going to reverse into me now so that's great it's good for the economy and good for everyone because i mean why wouldn't you want to come to a place like this in the summer? It's just wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. I'll tell you what I haven't seen on my adventures over the last two days. I can't believe I left the UK yesterday morning. Anyway, over the last two days. Um, is any motorbike shops? Oh, look at that bar. That looks nice. Yeah, no motorbike shops. And... I'm sure there are some, if I'd looked, there's probably a couple in places like Annecy, but none en route, and the amount of motorbikes. So we've averaged 48 miles to the gallon today, and that's interesting, because although I have spent at least half of it on the motorway, I've also spent a lot of it charging up and down hills. And this thing's so efficient when you're charging up and down hills. If I was in an M2 or something doing what I did today, well, it would use a lot of fuel. Um, yeah, this thing seems more efficient charging up and down hills than it does sitting at 85, 90 miles an hour. Wow, look at that mountain in the background. Oh, goodness, that is just beautiful. I've forgotten the actual name of the hotel, just like last night. So I'm hoping, ooh, RS3, very nice. Nardo Grey, nice. Hello, my friends. So it's somewhere here, it's here. It's just here somewhere, here. I'm gonna go and find my hotel. Found the hotel, it's about 100 meters further on. Uh, again, I think I paid about 75 euros, um, not bad at all. Look at that for a view. Lovely. Someone up there just having a beer on the balcony. I think that might be me in a minute. Ooh. Well, I think this is a good time to, to sign off. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this first part of my adventures on the motorbike. Um, part two is going to be more about the passes going up to um, the Col de la Bonne, which is one of the highest paved roads in the world. Been up it a couple of times in a car and I'm going to go up it on the bike. Um, that was like my goal for this trip. So make sure you keep an eye out for the second part to this video, especially if you enjoyed it. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys then. Thanks for watching. Thanks for the support. And uh, I'll leave you with that view.
Look at that for a picnic setup. Someone coming down here in their Z4. Ah, people living. That's what it is. People living. Oh yes. Then it opens up. Look at this. Just wonderful. And here is the peak. Look at that.